Hi, this is Brian with Profilus Media and Post, and today I wanted to talk about how we can remove objects in a moving camera using the Planar Tracker, inside DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion page, and some of the common issues we may run into while doing object removal, and solutions to those problems. With our playhead over our clip, let's go into the Fusion page. And let's rearrange this a little bit so we can see the clip a little bit better. And let's go through our clip real quick just to see what we're going to do. And so we have a decent amount of motion. And what we want to do is we want to remove the sign that's above the exit sign. And so even though this looks like it's a pretty easy shot, we're going to quickly find out that there's quite a few problems. So the, before we start doing the tracking, the thing I usually like to do is find a nice frame that doesn't have much motion blur. And we can use that for the pattern for the tracking and also for our paintwork. So something like frame 205 is pretty nice. So let's use 205 as our reference frame. So with our media in selected, hit shift space bar. And let's add a planar tracker. And now let's go in and add our bezier shape around the object we want to track. And we finish off our shape by clicking on the first point. Uh, something like that. Once we have our shape done, let's go over to the inspector. And we want our operation mode should be track. The reference time should be set to the current frame or the frame that you created the Bezier on. And the other thing I want to change is the tracker type from point to hybrid point. And I generally find the hybrid point area tracker to work well in these kind of situations. So with those things set, let's click on the track to beginning. And if we go up to reference time and hit go, we'll go back to our reference frame. And then let's track to the end. Okay, and well now that we're done with our track, let's just scrub through the timeline and make sure that our track is looking good. Okay, it looks pretty good. Make sure we go back to frame 205. And now that we have our planar track done, let's set up our object removal workflow. Let's bring our planar tracker up. And in this planar tracker, we want to stabilize the footage. So in this planar tracker, let's go over to the inspector and in the operation mode, let's change that to steady. That's going to stabilize our clip based on whatever frame we set here. So we want this set on frame 205. And now we can see that the entire frame is stabilized based on the position of frame 205. So our sign object is nice and static throughout the shot. I'm going to go back to frame 205. Next we want to copy this planar tracker, command C, command V, and paste the planar tracker and move it to the end of our workflow. In the second planar tracker we want to reintroduce the animation. So we come down here and we'll click on the invert steady transform and that'll add our animation back so it'll match the original clip. And now let's disconnect our planar tracker and we want the end of our workflow to come over the top of our original clip. So if we bring our planar tracker over to the little white box on top of the media in and let go, we'll create a merge. And you can see now that our planar tracker is in the foreground over the top of our original clip, which is in the background. And then we want to take that merge and bring it into the media out. So now we want to do all of our paint work in between these two planar trackers. So let's select our first planar tracker and let's click on the paint tool. And before we start painting, I want to point out that if we bring this planar tracker up, the second planar tracker up, you can take a look at the clip. And what we're doing right now is we're bringing this entire frame over the top of our original image. And we don't want to do that. We want to just bring in just the patch. We want to alter the original clip as little as possible. So we want to add a mat to cut out just the paint area. So let's go back to frame 205. And with the paint selected, 
let's press A to add a mat control. And we're going to add in a mat here to cut out where we're going to paint. So let's go up to the polygon mask, add a pol polygon mask. And let's zoom in here a little bit. And let's add a shape around where we want to paint out. And let's give ourselves a little bit of room. That'll make it easier for us to blend in our patch at the end. Okay. Now if you had the mat control selected, by default it's going to go into the effects mask. And what we want is the polygon to go into the green arrow, which is the foreground because we want to add this alpha to our paint workflow. And then in the matte control, to add in our alpha, we want to come over to combine and change this to combine alpha. And then come down to the bottom of the inspector and turn on post multiply image. And that will multiply the alpha against our image and just give us this little patch. And that's what we want for our final image. Okay, so now that we have all that set, we're ready to start doing our paint work. So let's come over to the paint node. Once, once we select the paint node, we want to change from multi-stroke to stroke. And the reason we want to do that is that by default, the stroke tool will add animation for all frames. And if we come down to the stroke controls, you can see that here. It says stroke animation, all frames. And that's what we want. Because we want to remove this object from the entire clip. Okay, so now let's paint out our sign. We want to start by using the clone tool. So let's click on the clone tool. And the way the clone tool works is once we, if we hold down option and click, and that will be the source that we'll use to paint out our object. And then once we start to paint, you can see that we can remove our object. So let's just paint this out. And we can already start to see some issues here. And that is that even though we're painting from right around the sign, the colors are, are definitely different. Even if we, if we can zoom right in here close. And you may not be able to see this that well with the compression of the video. But even if we come really close to the edge, those colors are just too different. And we can really see that by using the Gain Gamma sliders. To get to the Gain Gamma sliders, if we come up to these three dots, there's a menu. And if we click on that, we have the option for the Gain Gamma sliders. Let's turn those on. And these, the Gain Gamma sliders are great for compositing, not just for paint work, but just your overall compositing, because you can push down the gamma to really see how well your effects are blending in with the image. So no matter what kind of color correction happens after you do your effects, that your effects won't fall apart. So now we can get a better look at what's going on here. And you can see even that's too dark. Let's so command Z and undo that. But you can see that no matter where we grab from around this patch, it's really not going to work out really well. And that's too bad because if you can clone out an object from pixels right around it, there's a real advantage because it will retain the color and also the grain throughout the clip. But when it doesn't work, we have to come up with our solutions. So this is gonna be our first problem we're gonna to have to deal with. The first approach I would take to this is I'm gonna try using this smear tool. So let's go over and turn on the smear tool. I'm gonna to use the smear tool to try to blend these colors in from all around. Now you may have noticed that the polygon that we set up does not have a, it's a nice sharp edge right now. And that's okay, we're gonna leave it like that while we're doing this part of it. Because if we can get this to blend in with a sharp edge, then when we come into the polygon mask and kind of blur the edges 
we can really blend this in so you can't even tell that we took out the sign. So I'm going to take this and try to push these colors around and it's going to take a little while. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, while I was doing this, and this is a problem with this version of DaVinci Resolve, I noticed that my gain gamma sliders have disappeared while I was working here, and that's probably going to mean I'm going to crash. So if I come up here to the menu and turn off the gain gamma as soon as I do that, I'm going to, there's a good chance I'm going to crash. So I'm going to click save right now before I turn this off just in the event that I may crash. And I did. Um, so let's go back to where we were here. Uh, I was working on this patch. Let's turn on our gain gamma again just so we can see. So we've done our patch in here. And that's looking pretty good. I think we could spend a little bit more time, but overall I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. And another way that we can analyze how well our patch is doing is by using the split view. Now currently we are looking through the media out, our final composite, and that is in, in the viewer A. And if we come up to the split view and switch to view B, we can load in our original clip. And let's go to frame 205, which is our frame that we were using for our reference. And let's click on the split view. Once we click on the split view, we get this slider here. We get this slider here. And if we grab the box between the A and B, we can slide back and forth to check our composite. We can also grab the line anywhere else and rotate it to just double check to make sure that our patch is looking good. And that looks really good. That's blending in pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off and let's load up our viewer A. And one other thing we can do to make our patch really blend in is if we go into the polygon, let's load it up into the inspector. And then if you just click outside of the polygon in the node view, we can turn off the polygon but still have our inspector. And let's just blend in these edges just to really make this nice. And I'm going to soften the edges a little bit. And then I'm going to use the border width just a little bit just to help blend this in. So just a little bit. And that's going to help blend out in our patch. So that's looking pretty good. So now that we have our patch pretty good, let's step through our sequence and make sure that it looks good for all of our frames. Yeah, it's looking pretty good there. I know that we're going to run into some problems when we start getting closer to the end. You can already start to see it showing up. And there we go. Now, now, as we get closer to the end, the problem is that we did all our cloning and smearing the image around the sign, and now the sign has gotten close to the edge. So now we're actually pulling pixels from outside of the image, which have no information. So we're starting to get these black marks. And if we look at our paint, you can see that we have grabbed from outside of the image. So using the stabilizing and cloning throughout the shot is not going to work for the entire image. So we're going to have to find a different solution. And this is another approach to removing objects, and that's to use a still frame. So let's go back to our frame 205. I'm going to bring our merge up to the viewer. And what we can do is, if we're on frame 205, because we did all our paint work here, we can just delete our stabilize. So we'll delete the first 
planar tracker. And then we're going to add in a time stretcher node. And we'll use this time stretcher node to make a still frame. So holding down shift, we can drag it over here and add it into our workflow. And in the time stretcher, let's just change that to frame 205. Now let's go through our sequence and see how well our patch is holding up. Now we're looking really good all the way through. Okay, great. Now that we're going to use a still frame, one thing we're definitely going to have to do to help blend this in, if we look really close, let's turn on the gain gamma again so we can really visualize this. Let's bring this down. You can see that the there's no grain on our patch now. Uh, and a lot of that has to do, well, with a still frame and also because we smeared all of the pixels around and blurred them. We, we've gotten rid of all the grain. So we're going to have to add in some grain to really sell this. Let's uh, go over to our planar tracker at the end of our workflow and let's add in a film grain. Let's add that in. Now the film grain could be a video all in itself to match it to our original clip. And if you want to know how the the process of doing it is basically, let's turn off this mon monochrome. If you really want to match this perfectly, you would come in here to the channel and you would go through each channel and match each channel. So I would go to red and then if I click inside the viewer and hit R, that'll move it to the red channel. So we're just looking at the red channel and we would adjust all these settings for the red channel. And then we would inside the viewer hit G for green switch just to the green channel and come in here and adjust for the green channel. So it can be, it takes a little bit of time, but for this tutorial, we're just going to use the master settings and get it really close. And we can do a pretty good job just using the masters. So what I'm going to do is uh, first thing I'll do is bring down the color strength because I can see here that the color, the strength of the color is not that strong. Let me try to get that kind of close. And then the size is definitely a little too big. Let's bring that down a little bit. And then the master strength, we can bring that down. Okay, that's starting to blend in pretty nice. Maybe add a little bit of roughness. I'm just really looking at this area and this area to sort of analyze it. And once we get it close, you're going to want to step through the frames and just see how the motion matches up with the other grain. It's actually a little bit too big. Bring it down. So overall, that's looking pretty good. I still feel like you might want to come in here and alter this a little bit further just to really blend it in better. Uh, another thing we can do actually is after this Mac control, let's select the Mac control, hit B for blur. And let's try blurring our patch just a little bit and see if that helps really sell it. Okay, I mean, that's looking pretty good. That's a pretty good patch. Let's turn off this gain gamma. And let's bring our AB back. And let's just take a look at this again. I'm going to come in here nice and close. So that's a couple different approaches you can take to removing objects from your scene and a couple of the common issues you may run into when removing objects and some different solutions to how you can go about fixing them.
So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you again in a future video.